started. Uh, I would just like to announce that our, our uh, attorney, Mr. McInnes, will be joining us by phone today, as well as our distinguished and honorable colleague, uh, Dr. Diane Kelly. And we're going to move down the list here to 2.1, changes to agenda and approval to agenda. <clears throat> and we do have an added item, added item 8.21, multi-year agreement with FSHS school broadcast bro uh, program presented by Vince Windham, program director, and recommended by the superintendent for approval. We'll move down the line. Section 3.3, .3, or section three, recognitions. 3.1, recognition of Sheriff Larry Ashley. We have no visitors scheduled at this time, no administrative personnel appointments. Uh, section six is public comment. 6.1, members of the public desiring to address the school board form MIS 5241 and also via telephone. And we're down to seven committee and staff reports. In-county travel paid for the period of September 10 through 23, 23rd, uh, 2020. And we are now down to the consent agenda. 8.1 will be the approval of the consent agenda. 8.2 will be approval of the minutes of the special meeting public hearing of September 21st, 2020. Workshop me meeting of September 24th, 2020. Minutes of regular meeting of September 28th, 2020. 8.3 will be appropriation of District 1 school board member capital outlay funds to Okaloosa Technical College for security camera repairs in the amount of $12,848.12 presented by Dr. Lamar White. 8.4 appropriation of District 2 school board member capital outlay funds to Bruner Middle School for building signage in the amount of $2,864.80 presented by Mr. Dewey Destin. 8.5 reappropriation of District 3 school board member capital outlay funds allocated to Silver Sand School and Project 2347 in the amount of $260.30 to a new project to be used toward the purchase of an outdoor collection box. 8.6 reappropriation of District 4 school board member capital outlay funds allocated to Silver Sand School and Project 1340 in the amount of $188.10 to a new project to be used toward the purchase of an outdoor collection box. Uh, 8.7, reappropriation of District 5 school board member capital outlay funds allocated to Silver Sand School in Project 1340 in the amount of $496.25 to a new project to be used toward the purchase of an outdoor box, collection box. And 8.6, or 8.5, 8.6, uh, 8.5 was uh, Dr. or Ms. Linda Vancheck, and 8.6 was uh, for me, and 8.7 is Dr. Diane Kelly. 8.8, uh, .8, request to advertise a public hearing for adoption of proposed school board policy 01-29 face coverings during COVID-19 pandemic, which implements the previously approved emergency policies 01-29 face coverings during COVID-19 pandemic emergency. 8.9, request to advertise a public hearing for adoption of a revised job description for specialist equity coordinator presented by Dr. Lee Hale. 8.10, invoices to be approved for payment presented by Rita Scallon, Chief Financial Officer. 8.11, school donations. 8.12, ITB 21-01, body fill, uh, bottle filling stations. I have a question about that. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Ms. Okay. Vancheck. Mr. Windham, please. Good morning. How are Good you? Okay. Um, on these um, filling stations, um, can you tell me uh, how we're um, distributing these and who gets them and how that's decided? I've got a quantity note. I don't have the distribution. Liz, I can get that from, from oh, maintenance. I think services. you're getting help I can, here. <laughs> I can speak to that. We reached out to the schools. Okay. Um, and, and, by and, request. And, yes, sir. And yes, ma'am. And asked them um, what their need was for that and, and then took all those in and uh, had purchasing help us make a, uh, do a quote for that or a bid for that so we could get the best price and moving forward. So we did have in the approved capital budget some funding available for bottle filling stations at schools. There is still some remaining. So once that this 
um, quote is, uh, this bid is approved, then we'll be able to continue to do more beyond what we have already in this particular uh, amount. Okay, so these, uh, this may be a, a not so smart question, but these replace old fashioned water fountains, right? To get away from. These can replace old fashioned water fountains. They can also sit next to a, a water fountain um, in certain cases if there's water supply available. But generally speaking, they would replace an older um, water fountain. Not all of them, but, but some of them in, in schools. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So Linda, we're all. Linda, Linda, can I interrupt oh, real sure. quick? Diane or uh, Jeff, if y'all could, would you please mute your phone? We're getting a, we're getting background there. Cameron, I've been I've been muted the whole time. Thank okay. you, Jeff. If you if you could. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, um, any school could request uh, these or. Yes, ma'am. We reached out to the schools okay. back in the beginning of the school year for okay. it, and so um, that that can be ongoing this school year. We'll continue to make that happen. Okay. All right. Thank you. Huh? Both, both of you appreciate it. All right. 8.13 tag on bid purchase over $25,000 play more recreational products and services 8.14 tag on bid purchase over $25,000 Nevada 8.15 exempted purchase over $25,000 Scholastic 8.16 school fire and, and life safety inspection reports for all Okaloosa County School District facilities for 2019 through 2020 Chairman, to be uh, submitted to the state fire marshal. Yes, sir, hey, Mr. Destin. Just, just a question. Um, there's one for every school, and I went through a number of them, not all of them, and I noticed that uh, you know it's, it's a basically a in compliance, out of compliance report, and then the, then on into the report it says steps being taken to remedy out of compliance. On a number of the schools, we had some out of compliance, and then when you got down to steps being taken, it wasn't clear to me what they were. It appeared that under steps taken, there wasn't anything, and then it asked reinspection, and it said no. Steve, tell us tell us how this goes forward. There obviously were a number, not a lot, but a number of non-compliant issues. Who checks up to make sure we put them into compliance? What's the mechanism in place to see that we do that? Yes, sir. So we have our own inspector, our certified inspector, John Jamison, and he conducts these reviews annually. And we bring this report to the board annually and so the, the 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 corrective action that's taken with response to each school is put in as work orders at the school site and so our maintenance folks um, track and complete all these so it's an ongoing process each year and you might see um, uh, an area where potentially a, um, a classroom teacher has used an extension cord that's not appropriate to be used or um, may have had something you know covering a, uh, an egress window and so those things are corrected immediately the ones that might require um, additional work are put in as work orders and so we track those through um, our maintenance work order process to make sure those are done and so at, at, is there a period at which we get these accomplished I guess it stretches out and, it, it, and there is someone that checks to make sure that we have fixed all yes sir them. yes sir each one of those is tracked and and so um, this report typically would have come uh, I think John Jameson would have completed that during the school year last year and then at some point in the spring we brought the final report together but COVID had us out of school so he was not getting into schools completing those so he finished those up um, as quickly as he could and got those back to us but yes sir we track completion of all those and it's a um, you know with 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 2,000 plus classrooms um, new teachers and we try to make sure we train and John does a good job of putting out guidance at the beginning of the year but it's important to go back through and make sure that we um, um, advise our folks and our principals and make sure we track behind it to, to make sure that everything's been been done completely okay thanks yes sir all right 8.17 sale and disposal of surplus property 8.18 2019-2020 state equity report 8. Point uh, excuse me chairman yes I had, sir. I had a quick question on that one yes too. sir um i spoke to dr hale this morning and and i know uh, Mr. Chapman made a very long and thorough report here. My question was if Dr. Hale could give us a brief update on the things we've done to move forward after all these equity things. Uh, the federal government's taken this pretty serious, Title IX, et cetera. Um, and of course, it is an area that attorneys just love to litigate because it's, uh, they can make money for their clients. But even more important, we want to make sure that we have no equity issues with our employees or our students and Dr. Hale gave me a brief 
synopsis of the things we're doing and I thought it would be good for everybody to hear it. Sure, thank, thank you. you. And, and good morning, Board, Mr. Chambers. Uh, it's, it's very interesting when the federal government uh, comes out with a new, a new law statute that kind of aligns with some of the things that we're already doing. So we're very blessed to have a, an equity officer already in our, in our district that oversees some of these things. And I know that we've got the new emphasis with sexual harassment as it regards to Title IX. So that, and that's reflective in the job description that you saw. But it's also a reflective in many of the procedures and processes that we do in an ongoing way to prevent um, problems from occurring, preventative measures, some are in response to things that have happened in the past and some being proactive as we try to continue to ensure that the culture in our buildings is what it needs to be. And so just by way of information, some of the things that, uh, and, and Mr. Chapman's great at organizing many of these things and, and doing great follow-up and providing resources, but just so that the board is aware uh, of some of the things that we do to ensure uh, uh, that we have uh, dis you know, when discrimination issues pop up that we do things the right way and hopefully we can provide a culture where they pop up less and less often uh, there's been an emphasis in training uh, both at the district level principal meetings as well as in school assemblies and faculty meetings uh, for reporting specifically one of the things that we over the last several years have provided an emphasis on is ensuring that both students and employees know not only who to report to but how to make that report how to protect their anonymity and in fact there's even um, signage uh, up in schools that provide uh, a way to get to mr. Chapman if, if people are uncomfortable going to an adult in the building or a colleague in the building however as I said we are concentrating on training to ensure that that culture uh, doesn't provide any discomfort so that people can actually know who and when and how to report um, Another thing that there's been an emphasis with regard to training in these various uh, venues is with regard to how to conduct appropriate investigations that allow for not only consistency of process but consistency of uh, consequences should there be any. Uh, we want to ensure that, the, that, that any discipline levied is, is done in a fair and consistent way uh, as, it, as it comes across, whether it be in the HR department or in the student services department. And I know that they've done a good job uh, in student services of aligning things like uh, processes and consequences across the district to ensure that we are handling things appropriately and consistently not just at the school level but across the district um, uh, there's been uh, uh, some follow-up with regard to school assemblies and looking at agendas and ensuring that some of these training materials that mr. Chapman does a good job he's a really good resource not only for himself but also he's got a network of equity officers that he's able to pick brains and get resources and things that maybe can be tailored for specific instances at schools and so he does a good job of ensuring that the principals have the the things that they need uh, when they present to their students um, and if and he's uh, frankly if he can't find something we we've, we've done a good job of taking the things that we do have and kind of reorganizing them in an appropriate way and one one instance that comes to mind is we've got uh, a lot of employee trainings that are provided through FISBIT uh, and some of those we've had to tailor for student related issues in the past when there just has been a lack of, of materials in a particular situation but but training uh, and school assemblies has been another thing that we've been doing and of course we've had a lot of individual follow-ups uh, with administrators as they uh, go through some of these things to ensure not only that they have a comfort of resource from the district level but to ensure the consistency and make sure they understand it so that we can continue uh, to, to improve in areas where we need to improve so those individual follow-up meetings have been a part of this um, we've also had a focus on appropriate notification not only the reporting piece to the district but you know notifying the board when certain things come up from child abuse through discrimination you know that I contact you guys very frequently uh, about various issues and should these things pop up that's obviously included in our communications but also notification to the proper authorities if it's if it's appropriate and 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 the right thing to do law enforcement DCF etc those types of things and certainly uh, one of the things that we've made a process in all of our reporting is including parents when their students are involved so uh, these are always uh, um, measures that we take no matter what pops up at the school level involving students um, and again I just did want to note one more time that the student service office has done a really good job of, of creating consistency with how we handle student issues um, so everything from reporting to consequences so um, it's been a uh, you know a, a two-year journey to this point but I feel like we have some really good uh, accountability processes in place to ensure that the, your worries uh, don't come to fruition thank you dr. Hill and uh, mr. Chapman thank you for your thorough report 
So now we'll move down to section uh, 8.19, uh, 2020, 2021 uniform statewide assessment calendar. 8.20, permission to submit application to the University of South Florida, Florida Department of Education for youth mental health awareness training allocation. And then our added item 8.21, multi-year agreement with FSHS school broadcast program. I have a question about that. Okay. Okay, so um, basically this is a broadcasting program for Fort Walton Beach High School, correct? Where they're going to be broadcasting uh, various of their athletic programs on, on what? Can someone explain what that is to me? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I can offer explanation to that. This okay. is a company that also uh, works with the Florida High School Activities Association and does all the live streaming of their uh, athletic competitions. The, the plan is that they will come and install uh, a Pixelot camera system uh, in two locations at the school, I think one in the stadium and one in the gym. And the school will then have control of the broadcasting uh, over those systems. And basically it's a way in which the school can uh, live stream athletic competitions. Persons can buy season passes to watch the games through live stream. It is a, a cost uh, sharing, uh, uh, revenue sharing agreement with the school based upon the number of either individual game uh, passes or season passes that are sold. Um, it offers some uh, sponsorship opportunities for the school to uh, to sell as fundraisers to sponsor these broadcasts. Um, and so that's the basis of, of what it is. There's a, a one-time upfront uh, fee the school pays and then the company uh, comes and installs the all the camera equipment uh, that is needed uh, at their expense and then the school gives them the schedule of what they're going to broadcast. So if the school is having a basketball game and they decide it's kind of like a pay-per-view is what you're saying so they would say we want to uh, maybe it's a, 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 a rivalry game or something so they want to say well we want if people want to pay to view this game they can get on and and pay a fee to watch it is that correct that's my understanding okay so uh mr attorney then would there be any i'm just asking would there be any privacy problems with doing that or would it be understood that if you're coming to a <clears throat> public game it's understood that you're there in public Right, you're you're already if you're there at the game or participating in the game, you're already uh, participating in a uh, activity that is open to the public, and there's you know the, the the public can come in and view and watch that, and so this is just a way, kind of similar to the way it's done with graduations, would give family members and other supporters of the school and and those interested in athletics a way to watch games if they can't get there personally to see them. Would they be selling, um, would it be recorded or would it be strictly live? In other words, would they be My selling, uh, you know, it, DVDs? I think or? it's live stream as a fan check, but, but I do know that, that the system probably will record the game for playback, um, but I don't, I don't have all those technical details. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. Good. okay. So now we'll move down to section nine, superintendent's human resource recommendations. Uh, the first two items will be for informational only, 9.1, employees on administrative leave, and 9.2, deferred retirement option program to drop. 9.3, forgiveness of work days for employees due to Hurricane Sally, September 14th through the 18th, 2020. 9.4, cleared certification requirements and issuance of contracts for the 2020-21 school year. 9.5, add a field report for the 2020-2021 school year. 9.6, employment separations. 9.7, personnel recommendations. 
9.8 employee transfers, 9.9 .9 employee suspension, 9.10 employee termination, 9.11 reinstatement reimbursement of sick leave due to line of duty illness injury medical examination, and 9.12 leave without pay. Section 10 discussion agenda, uh, right now there's nothing being moved to the consent. Item 11, construction program owners, biz owners representatives business, and Mr. Destin, you're up. Uh, thank you, Chairman. We don't have anything new to report. We are proceeding on all the projects in a timely fashion, and I see 11.2 is a program task order. Yes. And this is, uh, you're correct, 11.2 TPM program number six, task order number two, pre-GMP district-wide school security upgrade project phase two. And that is part of the things we're doing that we don't really make very public, yep. but they are proceeding at a, at a good pace. All right. And now we're down to section 12, information technology seat management contract, 12.1. CACI task order number 2-174 OTC camera repairs and 12.2 CACI task order number 2-169 Ballet Academy data drops and we're to section 13 Mr. McInnes your business sir uh, no report this morning Mr. Chairman okay uh, 14 superintendents business Mr. Chambers all right so I, I think everybody knows that uh, October is National Principals Month. And uh, if, if, if you've seen some things on Facebook or our school district uh, um, sites as well, you'll see that we're celebrating our, our principals. Mm -hmm. And like we said to them the other day, if there was ever a time to celebrate uh, principals, now would be that time with everything that's going on. Uh, but they do an absolutely fantastic job. It's been great to see teachers and staff uh, also comment on uh, their individual principles so that's been so that's been nice to see just wanted to let you know just in case you you weren't aware um, also I do want to just say you know as you know uh, COVID numbers are things that are that are asked of us uh, I know individual school board members myself or all of us maybe in, in, in different forms of communication and I did want to uh, just bring to light that uh, so we do have a COVID dashboard on our school board uh, web page and it's uh, on the front page you can click where it says uh, the COVID information it'll take you right to the page and then what you will see um, a few different sections one you'll see just the overall numbers um, to date and just one thing that I just want to reiterate to each of you and to you know those who might be listening it's only as up to date as the as the last submission so to speak so it could change the very next day but for example um, as of October 4th, we've had 78 student cases, positive, 78, which is about 0.3% um, of our population in the brick and mortar. And then we've had about 40 um, staff cases, which is about 1.2% of our staff population. But then when you go down on the dashboard, um, you know, all districts do it, do it differently. Some just do overall numbers and that's it. Some might break it down by just elementary, middle and high school, just as its own group. Um, but we did do each, uh, each and every school, each, uh, each elementary, each middle and each high school. So the public can know um, the positive cases. You will see if it says less than five, um, we're not trying to be, um, uh, trying to hide things, but uh, this is also coming from the from the health department we don't want to put one or two because then people can see can figure out exactly who that one person is or who that that mm -hmm. second person is so um, based on that recommendation from the health department we put less than five so that could be one or it could be five uh, but you'll see that goes down elementary uh, middle and high so there's a lot of um, information there for those who who might be seeking that information this is also <clears throat> I think important and timely and I'm gonna have Mr. Mr. Horton just come up and just give you a brief description of those who are wanting to come back to the school building so they can look specifically at their school and make an informed decision and whether or not they would like to come back and just to give you just a quick update on where we are um, with those families who may choose to come back just to Mr. Horton just to give a little bit of a an update 
Thank you, Mr. Chambers. Good morning. Um, so as we, as we mentioned in previous board meetings, the, the number of students in my school online was around 7,300, I think, at last count. Um, our window for our parents to call the school and request to come back into the building for the second nine weeks um, closes tomorrow. We've asked them and done some call outs and, and, and social media posting, and the schools have done a good job. We need that time between October 9th and the second nine weeks beginning to make sure we've positioned all of our staff in the right places for kids. So we really are, are thankful for our parents to do that. We do know there are a number of them that are waiting to the last minute. We know that there are some who wanted to see um, the COVID dashboard, so that's out there on the website. So we want to make sure we provide them with all the information we can to make the best decision for their for their child. Um, I've just been getting some preliminary information because I think there could be a a big push here the last day or two. Um, so a typical high school at this point might um, have, I've, I've talked to a couple maybe in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 students coming back, at least on record to come back at this point. Um, and that's all, is that all high schools combined well, or just I've got, each high I've, school? I've gotten some, yeah, the particular high school said 50 are on track to come back. Another one said 40. So I would say that's probably a number um, that, that's consistent. But what I'll be able to do Monday night is, uh, if you'd like, give you an update because our window closes Friday, we'll be able to capture that information um, in total and get it to you. Um, we range anywhere at the elementary level from, from maybe 10 to, to 35. Um, and so it kind of is different based on site. Um, but, but that's kind of where we are. And again, I don't think we'll see half of our population come back from my school online or anything like that. But even when you're bringing 50 back to a high school, that could cause a change in the, the types, the number of sections that you offer. And so we've talked about maybe a teacher who's a blended teacher who's teaching a Spanish class online, and maybe a lot of those students are coming back into a building, but maybe not all of them. And so maybe that teacher does need to come back to the building for another class of Spanish, but then the remaining students at the nine weeks would have to be reassigned to a different Spanish teacher, still certified, and continue their progress right where they left off. And that's part of what we're trying to minimize, um, but there will be, and we've communicated with parents, um, inevitably some changing of, of teachers based on this completely unprecedented model. Steve, and do they, we have any that look like they're gonna go from brick and mortar Two online. <coughs> Excuse me, Mr. Chess. Yes, sir. And that's one of the things that we've allowed to have happen um, continuously. So we didn't put put a stop to that. So that's still happening. So at a high school where 50 have indicated they're coming back, you have a number that are are moving towards online. So the net is something we'll have to look at. One of the things that we're seeing, uh, obviously, is is parents really have a lot of options. Is we're seeing students who are in the building full time wanting to move toward blended. So maybe at the nine weeks, take a couple of classes online and, and some still in the building, which you know, there could be different reasons for wanting to do that. They may not all be COVID related, um, but that's also occurring. So it's another heavy lift for the assistant principals and the principals in the schools. And that's why this three week period is so important. You know, if we've had a parent ask, well, why can't I let you know November 1st that I wanna come back in the building on November 3rd, it is just that planning piece that has to happen. Um, so we wanna make sure they have the information they need to make the decisions. And, and I, may I follow up? Uh, I really appreciate your remarks, Mr. Horton. And, and when, when you talk about the planning piece, I, I think it's important for folks to understand that, that a part of that may be uh, the employment of, of new faculty. Is that, is that correct? And, and we want to make that minimum. I understand. Um, but, but, but it could. Right, it exactly. Could. And of course, when you do that, then that means shifting things around, students, student desk and classrooms and, and all those kinds of things. And, and I too hope that, that that's minimum for all the financial reasons that yes, we discussed sir. last time. Mm -hmm. And I know that, that you'll be looking at that very closely. But, um, and, and I do think that uh, it's important to, to talk with folks about the, the length of time that such an adjustment might take. Um, in fact, if I remember correctly, or it might just now be something I dreamed or imagined, um, I think that the contract even provides some, some time to make those kinds of adjustments when it's necessary. I mean, in other words, it may not happen over day. I know, you, you know, overnight, I know you'll try to do that, but, but sometimes uh, uh, with those kinds of numbers and those kinds of shifts, uh, it takes a little time to try to work that out in terms of us being financially prudent and also in terms of securing personnel and those classrooms and all those kinds of things. 
Yes, sir. It, absolutely. And I will I will say at this point, Mr. Chairman, as I mentioned before, um, the, 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 the teachers union has done a great job working with us from the beginning and they understand the complexities involved and good. so in, in, in almost every situation we've, we've worked side by side with them to come Excellent. up with solutions. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Yes. Sir. Okay. okay. Mr. Chambers. All right. And then the last thing today that I'll discuss is um, just going back to my school online. Um, I think at the very beginning of the year during the summer uh, there could have been a thought that you know families would go to my school online they might stay there for the first nine weeks they might stay there for the semester and then they would come back and I think that there's a um, there might be a sense maybe even at the state level that uh, you know families come back to the brick and mortar um, but Miss Lightborn and her group I think have done a great job in preparing um, some families could stay longer so in that uh, so what Mrs. Lightborn and her group is doing is uh, we've created a survey. We'll be getting that survey out to, to families and to, and to our teachers um, about my school online, you know, what's going well, what can be done better, um, how are, you know, are the resources um, helpful. So just a number of questions to give us information um, and how we can do things even better. So that will be going out um, soon. I think that'll give us some good information and in how we can, you know, be prepared if this turns into the second semester where families stay there, um, and even, you know, we 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 talk about a new normal, you know, what what, what could this look like uh, next year as well? So the better we can get at this, I think it's important. Miss Lightborn, I think shared, you know, one of the huge counties in the state of Florida, the whole program it had crashed they they removed the program and they've gone to other means of online so I just think we just need to be prudent in uh, looking at how we can continue to get better teachers are working extremely hard uh, families are working extremely hard I think I shared with the group uh, I'm very proud of what curriculum is doing every week there's a conference call um, or zoom with the teachers and they're brainstorming and the, the neat thing is the teachers are brainstorming with each other to, to fix issues, so to speak. So a lot of work is going into my school online. Not perfect by any means, but uh, continue to work to get better. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. And we're now down to school board uh, members' announcements and requests for information. And I'm going to start with Dr. Kelly, who's on the phone. Dr. Kelly, you're up. Okay. I think I'm unmuted now. I just would really like to thank all the individuals who sent text, calls, messages, and cards of congratulations on the arrival of our first grandbaby, Gabriel A. Rizzo, who arrived on October the 1st, and he weighed 9.1 pounds Yay! and was 20 <laughs> and a half inches long. And I'll just say that I can validate what I've heard my whole life, but I was pretty skeptical about and that's that you love those grandbabies as much or more than you love your own. And I can verify that fact is true. And just to say that God has really richly blessed us with this little one. And again, thank you to everyone and including the superintendent who sent us a text and all of those sweet messages will be memories for years to come. So thank you and welcome to the world, Gabriel Rizzo. And uh, I will affectionately call you Dr. Gigi. Thank you very much That's for right. your report. Gigi. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take it. It's been Ms. a long time coming. Yes. Well, congratulations. And Ms. Vancheck will go to you. Well, you know, Dr. Gigi, I know you've had a lot of different roles. I've known you in a long time, but uh, <laughs> never seen the smile like I saw on that first picture you uh, texted me when you had that baby in your arms. And uh, I've, uh, you know, been around you while you've been waiting, and uh, I've know how long you've been wanting this baby, and I've just been so excited and uh, so happy for you and and Dr. Smith, um, Poppy, and uh, that's that's great. So I'm I'm excited, and uh, um, I know that it is such a thrill. So congratulations to uh, both of you and your family. I, I uh, I've missed you not being here, but. Uh, um, I know it's exciting to be down there with uh, your family and little Gabriel and uh, she told me this morning she had the early feeding and uh, 
uh, you're sp you're spoiling them good already, and uh, and everything. They're going to miss you when you have to have to come home. So, congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. I should also say uh, thank you to my colleagues for being so gracious and allowing me to be down here. I do appreciate that. Well, that's the best excuse you can have. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Do you have anything else? Does she have anything Thank else? Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. It's on you. It's on oh, okay. You. All right. I do have a couple of things. Yeah, back to, to business. But, <laughs> um, Mr. Dustin, could you help me um, by giving me a report on at Baker? You know, we have a couple of classrooms that were supposed to be done but when school was going to start, and they're still not done. And then there's the kitchen there and a couple of things. Could you give me an update on on uh, what's happening with that and when we can anticipate that all being done? Are you, are you up, on, up to speed on that, please, sir? All I know is that um, it's progressing. Okay. I'd have to talk to Dr. Smith and, and uh, the Jacob Titan people to get the, the time frame. My understanding was we still had a few months to go, but a month I will still? check on that for even, you. Even the classrooms? Well, I can, I can kind of answer on the one? classroom because I was there the other okay. day, but they're getting ready to move into the classrooms. Okay. They already got the furniture okay. and everything. It's ready to go. I think go. they were waiting for the yeah. drops, the internet. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah but they'll, okay. be, they'll be ready here soon, sooner I, than later, not I think months. We, uh, <laughs> we have a construction meeting on Monday, I think, Okay, right. we will get a right. real good answer for you for Monday So they'll night. have the classroom. I know the front office is done, but the yeah. classroom, okay, great. All right. Yeah, and, and I talked to Mr. Martello when we also went back to the lunchroom, and a lot of it has to do, like what Mr. Destin said, when you uncover old construction in buildings and you're yeah. finding a lot of other issues in there so they're trying to make sure that what what they're doing is they're fixing it and fixing it right so yeah, generally it takes twice as long and twice as much money right. when you do that yeah. i just know those classrooms are kindergarten classrooms and those two kindergarten teachers are working miracles with what they're having to do right uh, now so i know they need them so yeah we'll they do they do need them. report for you yeah, yeah. and uh also uh Thank you, uh, Mr. Superintendent. I've been seeing your messages for principals, and you're right. If they ever needed to be recognized, it's now, and those are great. I've been seeing those on, on uh, that, and so I think that's terrific, and we do need to recognize those principals. do want to get you to speak to, um, please, sir. Um, uh, we're hitting um, mid-October here, and all the different activities, particularly in the high school with around football, and things have started to kind of work with the, the new normal and everything. However, a big high school event is homecoming, and um, it is difficult in a new normal when you're used to traditional kinds of things. Um, it's my understanding, and I want you to please address this, that we are going to allow, um, in a social distancing way, to have a homecoming court and a crowning of the queen, that kind of thing, as long as that's done. But we are limiting anything um, like a, a parade, but also absolutely no dancing situation where it would be crowding students into a building that's correct right so that is correct but i, I want to be specific so homecoming as we all know is a, is a great time especially yeah. especially at a high school so many memories that, that kids take with them their entire life but we want to do so so safely so you will see um uh, king's crown and, and queen's uh, crown so you, you will see that but it'll look a little different this year so we are taking into account uh, the CDC guidelines um, a lot of the parades that were happening in, in previous years um, are not necessarily happening Baker for example um, is happening they are able to do their their parade in a uh, in a spaced out uh, method I spoke with Dr. Chapman specifically about Baker's parade um, and she was on board um, for that as long as we could space out. Um, Crestview High School, they decided not to have their parade uh, this year. Uh, I think Niceville High School is doing a minimal one with I think only the court this year. There will be absolutely uh, no dances this year, I think for um, obvious reasons right now. Um, but we continue to look at all of these uh, situations as we get towards the end of the first nine weeks, we'll be making more decisions on um, events as we go forward. We'll continue to look at the positivity rate in, in Okaloosa County, continue to, uh, to be in uh, contact and collaboration with Dr. Chapman, but that's where we are with, with homecoming. And of course, surely the people understand that this is all in an effort to keep our students and our staff safe. 
we always cherish those uh, traditions, but uh, you have to weigh it out over, you know, the safety of everybody and that we uh, just can't allow that at, at this time. So, all right, thank you, that's all. If I can follow up on, and Mr. Chambers, I'm glad you said what you said about the first nine weeks and what, what was conveyed to our parents going in uh, was that we had a, a plan for reopening and there was a nine week window and I believe at one board meeting you even said after nine weeks we would look at after that nine weeks how we were going to move forward so uh, and you just repeated that today so I, I, I agree with uh, Miss Ivanchek that we as a opening plan there was a nine week mm -hmm. window there that we were going to monitor things and you know and I hope after nine weeks we can start looking at things and uh, maybe allowing a little bit more things to happen based on uh, the data that's out there and if it's in a, you know, in a safe uh, environment. So, uh, but it was clearly stated that the first nine weeks we were gonna do it this way, so. And if, yes, and if I could follow up also, Mr. Yes, Bryant. Um, Superintendent, I uh, probably better than many, I understand the value of those extracurricular type events. Uh, particularly one like homecoming that Ms. Vancheck talked about. Of course, we won't be long. We'll be looking at proms and, <laughs> and all those kind of things. And having been a high school principal, you certainly understand uh, those matters. But, uh, but I think it's important uh, that when we, we talk about all this, um, it's important that, that we maintain our focus on instruction because that is, in my opinion, our primary mission at the instruction of our students. And, and I think we should be very cautious and be very concerned that we not do something that, that might in fact cause us to have to quarantine um, an entire class, for example. And uh, those of you board members that have been receiving those reports, you know exactly what I'm talking about, that when we have one positive case, we end up having to quarantine an entire classroom and uh, so uh, I think that we should be <clears throat> very circumspect at this, at this time until hopefully and prayerfully there's uh, a vaccine that uh, maybe uh, folks have different opinions about that, but that maybe will eliminate this travesty that's happened to our country. But, but in any case, uh, I think that at this time, uh, what your principals are doing and what your staff and what you are doing uh, regarding protecting the instruction of our students is, uh, in my opinion, very appropriate. And so, so I thank you for that. <clears throat> thank you, sir. Yep. Yep. I'm good. All right. uh, Dr. White, I'll go ahead. Too. Well, thank, <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Yep. Bryant. If I'd have known ahead in advance, as it appeared some did last night, I would have said, that's a good segue. <laughs> um, uh, but in any case, uh, I, I too would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Kelly on the new addition to her family. And, uh, Secondly, to express my appreciation, Superintendent, to you and your staff for the COVID dashboard. Um, that, that is a, a remarkable step toward transparency. Um, you know, oftentimes, and when I sometimes look at the videos uh, describing how needed the half cent sales tax is in Okaloosa County, and we show it all in our schools, uh, I guess sometimes I'm a little embarrassed as to how bad things look. And so there is a compulsion uh, not always to share all the information. Uh, but in this case, uh, no one can say that about your administration. You've put these numbers, these COVID numbers out for everyone to see. And uh, I greatly appreciate that. I think the public will appreciate that. And I think that will help parents make the proper decisions for their own children in their own circumstances. And so uh, I, just, I just wanted to say that. And uh, thank you, Chairman. That, that's all You're I welcome. Have. All right. Mr. Destin. And I will just reflect Dr. White's comments about the COVID dashboard. I want to thank the staff and, and the superintendent. The most frequent question that I am asked as I wander through the community is related to the cases in the schools uh, and the status. And I'd, and I'd also like to point out that the numbers are as uh, low as they are because of the vigorous contact tracing and the, in fact, quarantining that we are doing thanks to uh, the folks that work with Ms. Schneider. Uh, without that, the numbers would be far, far higher. 
And uh, I, I have not had a chance to look at the dashboard, but does it talk about quarantines at all? So quarantines are not on there um, at this point. Um, we did add those. Yes, sir. So, okay. so one of the things I think it's important because it's impactful to parents is when we do our weekly update for what's happened during that week, we report both student cases and student contact. Okay. So contact is the quarantine student. So they'll see a number there um, based on the contact tracing that Terry Schroeder and her group do. So they can figure that part out. And, and that's probably the biggest complaint that I've gotten is they just don't think that they should their child should be quarantined and I explained to them that if you want the school to stay open it's absolutely necessary and it's mm -hmm. CDC guidelines most of them accepted but uh, like I just want to congratulate the staff on the quarantine <clears throat> and, the, and the contact tracing that they're doing that are actually keeping the schools open and, and I'll offer one more one more fact um, that was out there and dr. Chapman puts out information weekly as well and we work with her to, to make sure all of her information is is accurate and synced up um, uh, a previous not this week's but a previous report she indicated I think she identified mr. Chambers um, of maybe 580 quarantine students in the district uh, give or take and forgive me for not having the exact number I think that, that she stated that potentially seven of those quarantine students um, became positive right. to which she could not attribute some other source of, of contact so in other words mm -hmm. What the schools are doing, what the classrooms are doing, we're not seeing a lot of, of, of positives resulting from contact in within the school. Right. So if someone's coming to our building that has a positive test. We're, we're removing them and quarantining um, the appropriate. They're not seeing a lot of spillover of cases due to school to school contact. Yeah, so it's it's working. Is the I, th I think so. I think so. Yes, sir. Thanks. That's all I have, Chairman. Okay. Well, and I would too like to thank Mr. Chambers and his staff for uh, just everything they've done during the first nine uh, first nine weeks that we're almost up in. And, uh, you know, it is uh, definitely been an interesting time. And, uh, you know, uh, but I believe too, we've been as transparent as we possibly can. And, uh, and I think that's kind of helped uh, parents be able to make the right decisions like Dr. White said, and, uh, you know, we have to our safety is one of those paramount things that we look at every day when we're making decisions up here and I think in in today's time I'd rather take the extra steps right now so we can get back to a, a normal later on so so with that being said we're as normal as we can get right now <laughs> because dr. Kelly even though uh, you're not here I am wearing the Niceville shirt today. So Paul, if you can get a picture of that, I'm getting ready to head over to Niceville High School after I'm done to do the ceremonial picture with Mr. Morello because Niceville defeated Crestview this past weekend, uh, even though we will have an opportunity in the playoffs to play them. But uh, this started back when Miss Thrush was on the board and you know, kind of Miss Thrush was, she always had to wear the Crestview shirt. So, uh, uh, but since Dr. Kelly's been on, I've had to wear the Niceville <laughs> shirt. So here it is. <laughs> and uh, congratulations. I look forward to seeing that. I'll get the picture, Dr. <laughs> Kelly, and text it to you. <laughs> so, uh, Very good. I'll send the video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving down to Section 16 will be public comment, and this will be the two-minute version of public comment. And the part I like the most, we're adjourned. <laughs>